I love the work that you're doing and I, I'm trying to like figure out like a great introductory point. And I think the thing that's kind of calling to me is like starting with mindset change and like the whole concept of going from Wall Street to now keynote speaker, um, insanely popular podcast. You have your own courses. Like you're really trying to get people to shift their mindset and kind of create the life that they want. And you're doing it within your own life. So you're leading by example, which is a beautiful thing. So um, I guess there's this quote and I, I wanted to read it to you and see what Love a good quote. People change when they hurt enough that they have to when they learn enough that they want to, and when they see enough that they're inspired to, or they receive enough and they're able to. And I love that so much because I think that we often get caught in this cycle of trying to change other people and we want them um, to be the perfect spouse or the perfect business partner or the perfect parent, but really that's more of an inside job. And I totally agree with all of those things. I'm curious if any of those ring true for your own growth and personal development. To be honest with you, all of them did. <laughs> Especially the one with like hurt. It, it reminds me of a quote I heard back in the day that's like, you got to become sick and tired of being sick and tired mm -hmm. and just knowing that you're here for something more than you're currently settling for, mm -hmm. so to speak. And, and to be honest with you, I forgot the other ones that you said, but they, to be honest, they all resonated with me. They all hit home. Um, and, and you said something about knowing, right? Like when you get to a point where you know better, kind of like mm -hmm. know better, do better. That, that's mm -hmm. what I was thinking. Um, but it's a great quote and, and all of them resonate, if I'm being honest. So what was your pain point? What was like the biggest pain point for you? Just to give a little context, I was on Wall Street for 13 years and I was making a lot of money. And at that season of my life, that's what I attributed to be success. And just to be clear for your listeners in the audience, making money is absolutely a part of success, but it's not the only part. And I just, you know, nothing too catastrophic happened. I didn't like get my arm blown off in war or, or anything like that or divorce. I, my pain was my pain. And I got to a point where I was just waking up and, and I was miserable. And Wall Street was a lot of fun until it wasn't. And I just wanted to contribute and make an impact. And I wasn't really doing that. And about three years ago, right before the pandemic, I got into a pretty dark season. I just got out of a toxic relationship. As you, as you guys know, it's never fun. Mm -hmm. um, and my best friend, my dad, had just got diagnosed with cancer. And... On top of that, even though I had my own business, which I'm super grateful for, I didn't find meaning and purpose in it, if I'm being honest. Mm -hmm. And so my pain was my pain. And as I imagine you can attest to, spiritual and emotional pain is, is far worse than physical pain. And so I started drinking more than I'd like to admit, but I didn't stay there long. I don't know if I found running or running found me, but, but I believe there's always something in between. And running for me was that catalyst or gateway drug, if you will, to really start to find myself, to wake up with purpose, inspired. And I started running a bunch of marathons. It was awesome. And I wasn't looking to become a professional or anything like that. I was just looking to find myself. And I did. And then the pandemic happened, specifically the lockdown, and obviously a global awakening. But for me personally, I looked at this as a historic opportunity to kind of reassess. And it occurred to me when I did my eulogy exercise, which is essentially if this was it for us, and it's good for all the listeners to do, if this was it for you, what kind of legacy did you leave? What kind of contribution did you make? What kind of impact did you make? And it occurred to me at that moment that none, really. I had some good relationships. That was about it. And I had been underachieving for quite some time. And I believe all of us, are here for a much bigger purpose than, than most of us realize. In addition, we all have very unique special gifts. And so when I took that time to be available, I started getting the downloads and I was able to put it all together. And I've been obsessed with personal development for so long. People think CLS was an overnight success. I just finally put it together. I hit the ground running. For me, the cost of inaction was way too high, the COI. So I took my shot and the brand exploded. And I sold the Wall Street business and this is it for me. Also got engaged. It wasn't just a career reinvention. It, it was a life. But you asked me what my pain was. And I think it's interesting and I want to land a plane with, I just was underachieving and I didn't have much purpose and meaning in life. And I think that's everything. And, and that's the reason why there's blue zones in the world that people consistently live to 100 because they have purpose. Mm -hmm. And then people that retire early, 
and, and they retire from their purpose and all of a sudden their average life expectancy goes down significantly. I don't think that's a coincidence, right? Like the sperm without the egg is useless. And additionally, life without purpose is useless. And at that season, my pain was I lacked purpose. Mm -hmm. No, that's so beautiful. Yeah, the Japanese call it izakai, I believe. So it's it's one of the main principles of why that community can live past 100. And it's very normal. It's they're integrated into society. They're not pushed out into these homes like they still are gardening and contributing to the household and helping out family members. It's um, it's really weird. Kind of the Westerns, the way the way that the West deals with aging, it's almost we are supposed to waste our entire youth to work for somebody else with something that really doesn't give you a sense of fulfillment or, or passion or contribution to then retire and do nothing. You're like, that sounds horrible. I don't know that that's something that I want to do. I would get bored out of my mind. What do you mean do nothing? So